What's up everyone? Shane here with ROA Off-Road or RVs of America. I'm pretty excited to do a full tour for you today and this is going to be on the all new Pause Interval XC 16.4. This is a brand new floor plan. We've done some mini tours, we did show tour, but today I'm gonna go through everything on this. I'm gonna walk all the way around and show you every single thing. So if you're serious in buying this trailer, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video because I'm gonna go into tons and tons of detail on it and show you how everything works. This is a very, very cool product. We have a lot of pause trailers in general. We've been down to the factory. We've seen the frame, how it's built by Moride, the suspension, everything, the Garmin, the Victron, Battleborns, all of the things that go into building a pause unit. We've been to the factory and have shown all that. So you might wanna go check out that information. If you're interested in this trailer, you'll wanna educate yourself as much as possible. These trailers we carry at our South Carolina Experience Center. I'm out here in Utah right now just doing some videos and marketing stuff. We don't usually have these out here, but we do have them in South Carolina. We can ship these units anywhere in America. We sell them all over the country. Just sold one of actually this floor plan to a guy out in Washington, another guy, I think he was in California. So we can ship them and sell them anywhere in the country. So if you're interested, just reach out to us at our 801-860-0035. And that goes to all of our experienced coaches nationwide in South Carolina. And you'll be able to get all your questions answered, but hopefully I can answer a lot of those questions right now. So let's get into this. Some of the specs to start with, everybody's pretty excited about a smaller two wheel trailer. So as opposed to a tandem, we got a much smaller trailer. As you saw, I pulled up in a Chevy Colorado. Yes, we've been towing it around with a mid-size truck. We've been down to Moab. We towed it with a Jeep Gladiator. Obviously, if you're gonna think about towing this in a mid-size truck, you're gonna want to have a max tow package and you're gonna wanna get the base version of this unit. If you go with the base, it's gonna range around 52 to 5,300 pounds. That's empty dry weight. The fully loaded weight is just under 6,900 pounds. Go to our website and you can get the exact numbers. We have all the details there. This unit that's standing right behind me, 5,700 pounds. So not ideal for a midsize truck. Like I said, we have been towing it around with the Jeep Gladiator. The Jeep Gladiator is rated at, the one that we're towing with is rated at around 7,200 pounds. You can get some that are rated for closer to 8,000 pounds and some Chevy Colorados. Now, F-150, you know, 1500 Chevy, TRX, Ford Raptor, any type of 1500, this is going to be no problem. Fully loaded, like I said, is not gonna exceed 7,000 pounds. So any 1500 is going to tow this with ease. I've been towing it with the Jeep Gladiator and I've been pretty happy. Now the tongue weight is a little bit on the heavier side. It's 805 pounds. Of course, this depends on how you load things. If you can be wise with the way you load it, you're gonna be able to adjust some of your weights and it tows really, really well though. I was towing it with the Jeep Gladiator. With a 1500, you're gonna fly down the highway, no problem. With a mid-size truck, you're gonna, you're gonna go a lot slower. Up here, we have the front compartment that you've seen on all the pause units, a little bit different than the other ones because right here we have the two 20 pound propane tanks with a automatic transfer switch and then you have the 12 gallon air tank for your air compressor and that air compressor controls a few things it controls your air chucks so you can actually air up and it also controls your air bag air ride system so you can level and you can lift up the trailer to get more clearance when we were down in moab we were using that jacking things up lowering it really really cool this suspension is bar none one of the best suspensions made in America right now. I also do want to talk a little bit more about the specs as far as the length. The length from the tip of this hitch all the way to the very back is 22 feet and two inches. The overall height is about 10 and a half feet. Obviously you have a variable suspension and the suspension travels about 12 inches so it can go closer to 11 and it's over 10 feet. So if you have a 10 foot garage, you're not gonna put this inside your garage. You're gonna want a bigger garage than that. The box itself is just over 16 feet. And, and so that's what the, where the model 
comes from. So all of the pauses are XC, which stands for cross country. And then the number, the first number, 16 is the box size. And then the point four, the four means it sleeps four people. That's what I'm so excited about this trailer because typically a 16 foot box doesn't sleep four people and have a full dry bath as well, inside outside kitchen. This thing, you get a lot inside this little off-road trailer that you don't see in a lot of trailers right now on the market. Starting with talking about the frame, this is an aluminum frame. We did a tour at the Moride facility and they showed us how this thing is built and it is thick, it's super robust and strong. That thing is, and then all of this is, it's huck riveted just like a bridge that you would build. So there's no welds. And, and the reason why they, they've done that is because in manufacturing, there's a lot of air potential. The huck riveted, you don't have ever any air and welds. Everything is very precise. When we were at the Moride facility, they were showing us a machine that they bought specifically for this frame. It was a million dollar machine. And this machine takes in all of these pieces and it actually laser cuts the holes always exact precise and so when this gets put together it's just all bolted together and it's always very very consistent right here these plates that you see this is actually aluminum it's a powder coated aluminum so it kind of has a different look to it that was mostly just maynard saying i want it to have a different look to it and not have it all the same color so that's more just a, an aesthetic thing Another thing that they've added, and this you haven't seen on the previous models, is a setup where you can add a weight distribution hitch. So this right here, you can now mount any type of weight distribution or equalizer hitch on this. The brackets will go right through here and mount here. This is gonna be an addition that they're gonna start adding to all of the trailers. And especially if you're towing with a midsize, I towed with the Gladiator and I did not use an equalizer hitch. I just was running on the ball. And honestly, I didn't go over 70 miles per hour. I felt a little uncomfortable over 70. If I were to throw an equalizer hitch on that, I think you'd be really comfortable in any cross breezes or, or any wind or gusts or semi trucks. That would make it very, very stable. Up here, we have the Moride hitch. There is a new hitch coming out. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, it's unique in the sense that it now, it has a ball. This is one of the only two and five sixteenths ball in the world that they can find that has an, an articulating hitch. So it does move side to side, which is good for your camber when you're off-roading. But the new hitch that's coming out is actually gonna have an up and down motion. And that will be, you know, for those ruts or those washes. Now, like I said, we did go to Moab and we did a pretty insane Jeep trail and this didn't actually catch us up in any way. We were able to go and have no issues. This is all aluminum and this is a rhino lining or a powder coating. All, this is all actually all rhino lined up here or Raptor line. They send this through and this is just to protect for rock chips. It also dual purposes as uh, a seam protectant, right? So they put this over the entire trim here, which just allows it so you don't ever have any water intrusion right there as well. Let's walk over here. We have your standard seven pin, your chains. You have an electric front tongue jack that will lift up and down. Everything operates off of the Garmin system. So I've been now camping in this for, well, I went camping in Moab. We've been up here for a couple of days. We're gonna be up here for probably two weeks. I'm really excited to see how well everything operates. Over here, I've thrown out the solar panels. And then on the roof, there's also solar panels. So you have a total, with the briefcase and the roof, a total of 1,200 watts of solar. I've been running the AC quite a bit the last two days. It's on and off. At night, it gets pretty cool in here and you don't need it. Down in Moab, I ran it all night when we went camping down there. And you operate all of that with the Garmin. The Garmin also operates all of your stabilizer and front electric tongue jacks, or you can use the button right there. And over here, this is a lockable latch and you have some extra storage. And then you also have a spot to crank the jack manually and then of course you have a little cargo area up here and some places to mount stuff to it as well up at the front you can see there's a massive light bar what's really cool because of the garmin you can actually download the garmin app on your phone and so while you're driving down the road you know if you're out on a dirt trail it's late and nobody's around and you want some more light you can actually turn on those lights while you're in the truck towing and you can also have these side lights as you can see you have two side lights you have parameter 360 degree parameter lights all the way around the trailer 
And if you're on a trail late at night, you could boom, brighten up everything around you. Once again, you see the badging right here, controlled by Garmin. Uh, these are nice, heavy duty metal latches. And when you bring these up, you also have a magnet, so it holds it up. You don't need to be dealing with anything to hold it up. And you also have the striker right here is also metal. In here, you have a massive pass-through storage. There's also a light in there. And then over here, you have your air compressor. And this air compressor will fill up the tank. And then with the tank, you'll put air into your bags. So you're not just using this pump to pump it things up. It actually pumps up to 120 pounds of air inside that tank. And you can actually get that air out of the compressor right here at this chuck. So you get 120 pounds of PSI right out of that. So you'll pump up your truck tires really fast. You'll pump up these tires really fast. One of the things that they've done and on the original units that they revealed a year ago, they were not four seasons. The new units coming out are four seasons and they've gone to all Truma appliances. So you have a Truma combi, this duels as your hot water heater and your furnace. And the furnace is ducted underneath into the underbelly where all your water tanks are. You have a 54 gallon freshwater tank and you have a 30 gallon gray and a 30 gallon black. So all of those tanks have heated pads on them, but they also have ducted forced air into the underbelly. So they're gonna be getting radiant heat from your furnace being on. And then if you get somewhere extremely cold, you can flip on the tank heaters and as an extra precaution. Coming right here, we have our outside shower set up. This is a Nautilus system. This is really easy. You have a black tank flush. You also have your fills and all of these little settings right here kind of allow you to be able to pull water from a stream or you can winterize. You can pull city water pressurized if you're at a campground or you can run water off the tanks. And there you go. You can see it right there. And then you have a bypass right over here and you also have a duct from the heater so this entire compartment down here is heated. So if you're somewhere really cold, you have a nice gasket seal right here. You shut the door, you turn on the heater inside the cabin and it's going to heat this underbelly so things don't freeze. Right here, you also have a water filter and this is a 0 0.2 micron filter. And then you also have your hot water low point drain as well. Super easy to winterize. You can do it right here and you also have a a switch to turn on and off the pump here or on the inside or on your phone on the Garmin app because you control the water pump on the Garmin app. Right here, this is a water drain valve where you can pull that out. Now, as you can see, this trailer right now is in the lowest position. So you might say, man, that's pretty low. You don't have a lot of clearance. This trailer has around 25 inches of ground clearance wherever you're at under in the underbelly. It has an insane amount of ground clearance. We went down to Moab and you can see that. We were on a Jeep trail and we made it over everything just fine. So this is in the lowest position. This has 12 inches of travel. So from where you see this wheel well right now, this can rise up 12 inches, an entire foot. And everything you're seeing under here, you'll gain another foot of clearance, which is pretty good. That's higher than a lot of trucks. Right here, you have a sewer storage container. That's where you can store your sewer hose for draining your sewage. And then also, this is nice. I, they've added this little pin and this kind of tells you where you should be riding the, the ride height and then the lowered and the you've gone too high into the red. You also have a 30 amp connection. So if you do pull into a campground and you wanna plug into shore power or you wanna charge your your batteries, you plug in right there and you can, and you can also get a reducer and charge right off of your house, like a regular outlet. You wouldn't want to run the air. You could technically run the air conditioner because you can share power with your Victron, but I'll get into that stuff later. Right here is your solar panel ports, which you saw on the ground a second ago. It's a Victron solar charge controller and that's separate from what's the, on the roof. So lots of redundancies in this unit. You have two separate solar charge controllers, one that controls the roof, which is 600 watts on the roof, and the other one that controls the ground stuff, which is also 600 watts on the ground. Now down here on the tires, you have a 235-80 with a 16-inch rim. 
this is a street tire and everybody's saying, why, why is there a street tire on it? And it's like, that's just the only tires they had to get it to the show. This is the very, very first unit. So he hadn't had a chance to find, you know, a good, nice off-road tire, but this tire is rated for the trailer and the weight, which is about 7,000 pounds fully loaded if you were to fully load it. So that's the reason for that tire. You do have a ladder that will give you access to the roof which is actually really nice. I'm always like, why do you get on your roof? Well, I got on the roof today to clean the solar panels. So you do get on the roof every once in a while and you can get up there to check your seals and everything. And they've also done a new thing on this where they have the rack up there. If you look up there, there's all those pause symbols, which is really cool. But also above that, you have a rack and all the solar is elevated off the roof. And the reason why you do that is because you get a lot of airflow under there. And that's like the most optimal way to install solar panels putting solar panels like flat solar panels directly on the roof is the worst way to install solar panels because all the heat it heats it up and it's not very good now coming to down here we have our gray tank drain and our black tank drain and i love how they've tucked it up under here and away from everything and they put it along the side of the wheel opposed to in the back because in the back if you ever drop down and you can potentially bash it off they've put it up and tucked it out of the way and then you you just pull the ports to drain it right there underneath here we have four stabilizer jacks that come down to just stabilize the entire trailer the cool thing about the garmin system is when you're actually driving into camp and you get to wherever you're at you just push the tongue jack up, you press the button, you get it off the truck, you pull forward, you press one button and the entire trailer auto levels itself. The way it does it first is it le levels side to side with the airbags. And once it gets leveled that way, then it levels forward to back with the front tongue jack. Once it's completely level, then it deploys the stabilizer jacks down to the ground and it's all auto, one button and you're done. Now this right here, I'm gonna show you is one of my favorite features of the trailer and it's just pretty cool because you can show it to all your friends and be like check out my trailer this is the victron system now when pause originally came out with this trailer they were first going with renergy and maynard he's the visionary behind pause he reached out to us and said hey i want to work with roa because i know you guys are the authorities in this in the off-road industry and this is what you guys have been doing importing you know, off-road trailers from Australia and I want to team up with you guys and so he said give me every and all feedback and one of the first things I said is well, why do you got Renogy on it it was a good deal it was cheaper right and but it, it works and it, they have a decent name and I told him well Victron's the best and if you want this trailer to be considered one of the best off-road trailers in the world you're gonna put Victron in it and next thing you know boom Victron in and everything. So really happy. And then the same thing with the batteries. We told them Battleborns, right? Battleborns are amazing. So now we have on this unit, like I said, you can option the unit from 270 amp hours all the way up to 1,080 amp hours of lithium. That's like a 12 to 13 kilowatt battery bank. That's massive. When I was at the show, we were showing this off. Somebody walked in and they said, oh, I think Earth Roamer has a 13 kilowatt battery bank. And that's a million dollar motor coach. You know, that's insane. So down here, I want to talk a little bit about what we got going on here. He did do this pixie glass over this so you could throw stuff in and not mess up with things. But you can pull these screws if you ever have to access it. Everything's connected with these Anderson connections. So they just unplug and then there's uh, one like, or five screws you screw and the whole thing just comes out really easy to access and service the victron guy while we were at the show said this was a, the nicest system he's ever seen installed on any motor vehicle or camper or rv and he was like well if you ever need to service it you can service it easily but he was pretty confident that you should never have to service it so here we have two mppt solar charge controllers they're both 50 amp uh solar charge controllers so with the 600 watts on the roof and the 600 watts on the ground, today I saw 55 amps coming in between both of those. So 25, 27 from each source. So you could potentially double your solar or you could add a lot more solar. I shouldn't say double. You never get the full efficiency, but you could add more solar on the roof or add more briefcases if you wanted to because these have the capacity to do that. Right here, you also have a DC to DC charger. And what that is, is that allows it so you can charge the, the trailer while you're towing it. Now, typically 
most trailers come with a standard seven pin and that does put off a little charge it's very small maybe an amp or two this right here is a 30 amp charger and so what that means is when i mentioned earlier the batteries are 1080 amps so while you're driving you can put 30 amps into the battery while you're driving opposed to one or two and then these solar charge controllers potentially you could put 100 amps here we have an inverter this is a 3000 watt inverter and so what this does is this charges the batteries but it also allows you to take those lithium batteries and turn it into regular power and run the air conditioner run televisions laptops most trailers you can't do that people don't realize that and then here you have a distribution box and then this the servo gx this has a sim card and this allows victron to remote satellite into your trailer if you ever have an issue, you need service, they can remote in and they can fix things, they can find out what's going on, and they can also just collect data and find out how to improve their product. Over here, we have the Garmin system, and the Garmin system, like I said, is the brains of this trailer. I'll show you more of that inside because they've changed the Garmin on this unit from the previous units. And this just controls everything. It, it monitors your, your water tanks, turns on and off your lights, your solar, everything is run through the Garmin system. Garmin first came from the marine and aviation industry. Military use it. It's a very, very robust, good system. There's not too many people using this in the RV industry. Dynamax, I think is one of them and they sell million dollar motor coaches and then the pause over here one last thing i want to mention is you do have a heat duct so everything is heated the whole entire underbelly the water tanks and all let's head on over to this side and point out we do have a recovery and this is integrated into the frame so you could actually yank on this and pull the trailer out of a if you had a bad situation you have a switch right here which turns on and off these lights uh, you also have a steel bumper and the suspension is maybe 50% on this side and 10% on the other side. And look how high this bumper is. You're never going to ever hit this bumper, which is just crazy how much departure and clearance this little trailer has. This is your tire swing out mount. One of the things that I love about this, like I said, it is lifted up pretty high and we're also on a hill and that makes it a little bit harder. But when you pull it onto a flat ground and you lower it, it comes down to about right here and you can lift this entire back up there's a screen right here and if you want to you can come out sit in bed and look at this this is amazing this is what's super cool about this trailer like laying out here you put back up to a beach and just have this incredible view say you're a family and you like your toys you have bikes where do you put your bikes in the bed of the truck you tow them you put, stick them outside here maybe or maybe you could actually lift this up. This folds out of the way and you can put it all the way up against the wall if you want. And you have mounting systems all the way down here, here, over there. And you can actually mount all your bikes back here and be able to store everything inside. People nowadays, I know they have some pretty expensive bikes and maybe you don't want them outside getting you know rock chips on them. You can stash them inside no problem. Now I want to talk a little bit about the walls before we go too far. These walls, we have some videos of these walls where we tried to hit a hole through it with a sledgehammer. These walls might be borderline indestructible. They are so, so strong. The insulation is unbelievable. As in like, there is no thermal bridging. I mean, you can feel some heat coming through on a hot, hot day, but they really, really stop heat transfer from coming into the trailer. Also, these side extrusions are actually PVC. So you're using a similar material, which means you don't have heat or cold coming through. What's really cool about this is it eliminates condensation. It eliminates on a hot summer day, heat coming into the walls. A lot of trailers are gonna be built with studs, aluminum studs, and then they put a sheet of either aluminum or fiberglass. And that is very conductive, heat and cold. So in humid places, you get condensation coming through, or even in the cold, you get condensation. In the heat, you get hot coming through. It's just not the best design. More modern trailers nowadays are going to composites or one piece composite fiberglass. This stuff is unbelievably dense and strong. Right on the exterior, they do have a wrap, and this is a premium wrap. It has a gel coat. It's supposed to last five years. And then there's UV ink that's supposed to also last five years. 
against the sun. Um, up here, you do have your lights and you have some outside speakers and inside speakers, and you can control that all on your stereo or your Garmin system. I do wanna show they've moved the Max Tracks on this unit to the side, which I like because there used to be these little brackets that hold this up. Now, when you open this up, the brackets just rest right on here and you don't need to do anything with that. Over here in the front compartment, I have a little air gun and I can come right here and I can plug in right here. And if I wanted to air up my truck, 120 pounds, you got a power tool, you could do that. A lot of people are like, hey, what if the bags, what if it's not working? What if the Garmin's not operating and I'm having an issue and the electronics don't work? You do have a manual port right here. So if I wanted to come down here, I can put my finger right there and this will lower, as you can see, the side is lowering. And then if you wanna put the air back in, you just plug in with this guy, plug in, and then just press the button. See that? Easy. Or if you have a raft or bicycles from your storage area that you got in, pass-through storage is very big up there too. I'm really happy that they were able to do that. Underneath the suspension, I wanna talk a little bit about the Moride suspension. This suspension has 12 inches of travel. The only other trailer in the world that I'm aware of that has 12 inches of travel is a Bruder. So a lot of people have been saying that's the best thing on the market. This suspension is made and designed in America. Moride is an American company and they've been making suspensions and this type of stuff for over 50 years. And they have this with an air system and also blistering shocks with limiting chains as well. So this, this suspension is amazing, the way it articulates up and down when it hits rocks. Right here, you have your steel wheel fenders, so you're not gonna bust up a cheap plastic fender like you'll see on so many RVs in the RV industry. And then also you have an outlet, so if you wanted to put something here and you can run anything off-grid with the inverter. The TV inside also swings out and can be on the outside so you can tailgate. It comes with these little bench seats. So you, if you're hanging outside together and you wanna eat right here, you can just pop this up. And there's also the kitchen and the fridge inside so people can hand things through the window and you can set them out here. You can prep right here. You also do have an outside kitchen. Gas line right there also has a sink and a faucet. But this guy comes out and you have a cutting board on top. You have a grill right here. You can put storage. I'm just putting this right here. You could put this up front if you wanted to. And this goes right over here, mounts on that. And then you grab your little sink and you have a hookup right there and you have hot and cold water. And then you can just hook this in right here and you'll have hot and cold water outside. And then right here, this is one of my favorite things, is you have a fridge freezer. And as you can see, we've been storing our waters in here. This is just such an easy, simple, and you can adjust this, the temperature, all the way down to negative four degrees. So you can make it a freezer and put your steaks, your meat in there for grilling out, or you can put drinks. Whatever you want, you just adjust it to your liking. Over here, we do have a little storage compartment. It's like a pantry where you could put some extra spices or food or just miscellaneous stuff that you might need. Maybe your air chuck or your air gun, whatever you want right there, some tools. These steps are really cool and easy to operate. You know, a lot of times when you're going off-roading, the worst thing is when you bash your stairs off. These stairs go all the way up in here and they're tucked away. Shut your door and you also have a keypad so you can lock the door, don't need your keys, you forget your keys. I think I use that more than anything else. And it actually locks the deadbolt, which is nice. The deadbolt is the one that you wanna lock. This one is easier to break into, the deadbolt is harder. And then of course you have a screen right here. The last thing I wanna mention before we head inside, there's actually two things. One is this awning. This is a Thule awning. This is an unbelievably cool awning, very robust. These arms are the biggest arms I've ever seen on any awning. It just supports itself out like that. It doesn't need any legs. It also has a wind sensor, and I'll show you how to control that on the Garmin. It has two speeds, so light winds and high winds. And so if you're just walking around and a big gust of wind comes up, it will just automatically sense that and it will start retracting itself in so it doesn't get damaged. You also have these cool lights on the outside for some little ambient mood setting lights. And then these windows, these are a polycarbonate window. 
These are very, very popular in the off-road overlanding industry. The most popular one is actually a Eurovision. These are made from Lippert. And this is actually one of the most expensive windows that you can buy. This is a little bit thicker than the Eurovision windows, so they have a better R value. And they have the gases in it, so they're, they're good for winter or hot. And then inside you have a nightshade and a bug screen. But I'll show you that in just a minute. Let's head on inside. Here we are inside the all new 16.4 Paws. This thing is really, really nice inside. I love the modern finishes. Everything you see is fiberglass. This is a fiberglass panel. Some people think this is like paneling and it's not, it's fiberglass. There is not one speck of wood in this entire trailer. All of your cabinets, they have kind of a wood look, but they're actually aluminum. And everybody that comes and sees these, they're very, very impressed with how premium they feel. Uh, this right here, this trim piece is also aluminum and this really strong, uh, this is an aluminum door. We have our kitchen here, our bathroom here, fridge and booth over there. I wanna show you this bed area. Before I jump into the bed though, I wanna show off this TV. You can strap this and it has a pretty nice mount. So if you're sitting at the table as a family, you can watch TV right there. You can bring it into the bed area. Or I mentioned on the outside, if you were doing some tailgating and you wanted to open this window and this window has a few different settings it can open up just like to that position or you can click it to that position or you can go all the way up flat which the most windows don't do that that's a feature of these windows that i really like and this tv will go on outside and you can be able to watch the games from outside. Now we're gonna close this window. You just bring it back up and you shut the window and it has just a crack, like about a quarter of an inch setting, or you close it completely so you don't get dust in the trailer. And then you also have these nighttime shades or these bug screen. So I'm gonna put it up into the nighttime shade mode. And I'm gonna bring this TV around here. And I want to show you this bed area. So if you're out and you're back up to the beach, you can obviously close your nighttime shade and go to bed. Or let's not say beach, let's say a beautiful mountain range like the one you see out here. You can pull this down. And this screen will drop all the way down and it Velcros along the sides and also all the way down to the bottom and you can completely keep the bugs out by velcroing this all the way down and then if you still want somebody to be able to hand you something you can open the screen and be able to still grab some stuff but here you are hanging out in this bed enjoying this view the clouds are rolling over those mountains you can't see them as well as you could earlier when we got here and started this this is a true queen size bed that's a big deal because people, if you want any type of bed, say you're a huge fan of Tempur-Pedic or uh, purple mattresses or Casper mattresses, there's so many different mattresses out there in the market, you can put anything you want, a sleep number, and it is a residential queen. Or you can fold it back, keep this mattress. Uh, this is a very comfortable mattress, I've slept on it, and you can be able to put your cargo. These little box, these little square access panels get you down into the battery area. So if you need to get down there, for any reason in the future. There's a lot of storage space up here too. And these storage, these cabinets are very deep. As you can see, almost to my, my whole entire arm right there. And then you have more storage over here. So this is kind of the area that you would be putting maybe clothing, maybe extra bedding. You comes with this bedding and these pillows and then also you have a nice backrest. Here we have our an outlet, 120 volt, which will work off the inverter. If you turn off the inverter, you can use the USB or the USB-C. So you have both setups for plugging things in. Up here you also have another outlet with USB-C and USB. So all of you with your modern cell phone devices, you'll be able to do it. If you're in bed, you wanna turn off the lights in this area, you can do that. Or you can just pull out the app on your phone 
Now you can control everything. You can set the temperature of the air conditioner. You can turn the outside lights off, on, whatever you wanna do, you can be able to access anything on your phone. Right here, I do wanna show you some of the storage. It's very big. I'll put some stuff in here to kind of give you an idea of how much space. Those are full-size plates and they fit perfectly in there. See this right here? You have, it's very tall. This is a potato bags. You have a cereal box. Just to kind of give you an idea of what we have, we kind of put some stuff in there to, so you could get that depth and fill. This up here is your Wi-Fi. This actually can have a SIM card in it so you can be able to get internet via your cell phone or like if you had a service with Verizon. This is a new system. This is actually your stereo system, but through all of this components, you run the Garmin system. The previous models, you had a Garmin that was mounted to a magnetic strip, but you'd pull that off and sometimes it would have to reconnect. This one, they kind of did it a little bit different. They've just mounted it right into the wall over here. And so now you have all of your Garmin system right here. As you can see right here, we have an electrical bolt. This gets to your inverter, your solar system. This gives you your two Victron solar charge controllers. Obviously we're getting zero and zero because the sun is setting and we got crazy cloud cover right now. We're got a thunderstorm on its way, but this is your roof. And this auxiliary charger is for your panels that you can plug in on the side. You also have your, all your loads. One of the things that I really like about this is you can actually change your input. So say if you're visiting a friend and he has a regular 120 outlet in his garage and you want to say, can I plug in and get a little bit of power? If you have this set up too high, then it might pull the, you know, power from there and it won't blow the breaker. So what you can do is you can drop this down to only nine or eight amps. So you'll be pulling a little bit of power and you won't like blow the breaker in his house. Or if you have a generator, you know, a 2000 watt generator opposed to a 3000 watt generator you can adjust this down and you won't blow the breaker on the generator all the time. These other buttons you have right here is your water. And obviously you turn on your water pump, your water heater, your heated tanks that I was talking about before. We have full water right now and our black and gray is empty and you can click check and it will reset it and make sure it's all up to date. Here you have all your stabilizer, your awning. I mentioned it has a wind sensor right there. That's the button. You turn it off or you can put it on low or high. Um, I always leave it on at least high winds. And then if you do get some winds, it will automatically retract. You have your front leveling jacks, your stabilizers. You go over to here, you have your lights. One of the nice things about this is it has dimmers, so you can actually dim the lights right here. You can see that light right there is dimming, so you can make the mood nice and romantic, or you can make it bright and not romantic. And then you can go through and pre press on all of these and they all have those things. Or you can turn on the lights with these little buttons on the actual picture of the trailer. And then you go down to here or you can click all interior lights off, all interior lights on, all exterior lights on or off, or you can do them one by one. That's the light bar, or you can click front. So it kind of gives you a few different options. You also have the amber lights for bugs, or you can do the white porch lights outside if there's no bugs out. Um, coming over to here, you have home. This controls all of your, you know, your fantastic vent fan in the bathroom right here. You have your AC furnace, and then you control your temperature right here at 70 degrees inside. And then you can also check all, this is kind of like a quick screen that gives you a bunch of things, or you can go into the individual screens to get more options. This thing does a lot of other things like your leveling, your auto leveling system. This is what I was talking about, that one button. You go to camp when you get into camp. So this is as you're towing down the road. When you get to camp, you press camp mode, click auto, and you just click one button level. And we don't want to do that right now because we want it to not level. If you come over here, you can add this to your purchase. You can get another Garmin mount and it has this magnetic guy and you can mount it and have it with you. You can put it in your vehicle. With this system, you don't really need this unless you want the navigation, but you also have the app on your phone. And if you download the app, it looks identical to this. It's just a smaller version. Look at this, looks like a giant phone does the exact same functions. Everything that you can do right there, you can do on your phone, which I find myself using the phone more than anything else. Down in this drawer, it's pretty deep actually. You have tire monitoring. This monitors your temperature and your PSI on the tires. One of the biggest reasons for failure on uh, tires or blowouts is improper PSI or 
overheating. So that's a nice way to always be monitoring. You also have a backup camera and this comes standard. You can plug it in right here or you can plug it into your vehicle and you just wait for a second and we'll kick on. And there you have it. You can see this is right. You can even, you even have audio. So you can turn the audio down or turn it off. Let's see, there's the volume. But if somebody was standing outside and you wanted to, they wanted to guide you, right now it's just wind, that's what you're hearing. And the audio is crazy wind outside right now. You can, somebody can say, hey, stop, you're getting too close to this thing back here. And that can go plug right into your truck while you're driving and it's wireless and it will connect just fine. Those things have really good range. I've, we've done them like a couple hundred yards away from the actual camera. Let's talk a little bit about this kitchen area since we're sitting right here. Down here we have a microwave. Some of these things can be optioned. You know, we could remove the microwave, put some sort of netting mesh and just make this another storage area. Some people love microwaves, some people don't. Just below the microwave, you have a very large drawer and this is pretty deep. So pots, pans, whatever you wanna do in here, maybe more food. Right above here, we do have a propane cooktop right there. Just over from your propane area, you have a sink and this, these have covers so you can use it as prep space or cooking space. So right here, this comes up. This is a pretty cool sink and then you can adjust the sink right there. Wash your hands and be done with it. That goes on right there. This is another outlet and more USB charging points. So if you don't have enough plugs, you got one right here, you got two over here, you got one up in here for the TV. You got one right there. You got more plugs than I think you'll ever know what to do with. I really like that one just because it's super, it goes out of the way. Right here we have a little drawer and this is perfect for silverware. And then under here we have a very deep cupboard. There's a lot of space under there. Put a lot of, you know, probably paper towels and some maybe a tote with other stuff that you have under this area. This is probably where I put my, you know, some of my clothing and those are nice and long and they go underneath there and they all have this nice soft clothes and then they're magnetic too. So they're hard to come open one. And I've been off-roading and when we were off-roading, none of these cabinets or drawers came open, which I was super impressed about that. So before we go into the bathroom, I want to show this booth area because this booth area and the fridge is very it's very spacious. You've got a lot of room over here. So first underneath the fridge, there is another drawer. And look how deep this drawer is. This is, this is massive. And these are your manuals and some miscellaneous stuff you that comes with the unit. Right here, you have the freezer. Um, and this is the fridge right there. And you can control the settings, put them on high or low. So we were headed down to Moab and I forgot to turn the freezer on. And I was like, oh shoot, the fridge and freezer. And my wife was bringing food out. Well, she didn't know how to turn it on actually. Um, and so she turned on the outside little drawer fridge and she was putting stuff out there. But I came in and I turned it on and I was like, shoot, this, I need it to get cold because we're driving down and it's gonna be hundred degrees. I cranked it on full blast and uh, I wasn't clocking myself, but it must've been maybe 30 minutes to an hour. I had some waters that I threw in the freezer cause I wanted them to get cold really fast and they, completely froze like they not completely froze but they were ice when i came back in and i think it was probably 30 minutes to an hour so that was very impressive okay moving over to this table uh if you've watched one of the videos before you've seen i kind of was teasing you saying how do you get in this table because it's like there's no room to get in or you got to go under or jump over no you don't so i really like what he's done with this this thing slides and moves around so you can sit down right there and if you're fat or a little bit on the hefty side, you can scoot it away from you and you have more space for your belly. And if somebody over there wants to get in, you can bring it towards your belly and you can scoot it around uh, right there and then they can squeeze in and then you can bring it back out and put it to a nice comfortable spot. And then there's a mechanism underneath the table that locks this in and now it can't move any direction whatsoever. It doesn't move side to side or front to back. Uh, this also turns into a bed and I'll show you how that works really quick. Oh, before I do that though, I want to mention these cushions, obviously this is slanted right here. 
So if you were normally to be sitting here, it might be a little uncomfortable. So what he's done is he's added these cushions right here so you can have nice lumbar support and be very comfortable. Um, and if you wanna lounge backwards more, you can go over to this side and you can lean against the wall and lounge pretty comfortably over there. Lots of windows. This thing, right now it's raining outside. It just barely started raining here. On a sunny day, this whole thing is unbelievably bright. One of the things I do wanna mention about these windows that I don't think I did tell you is the actual frame on these windows are polymer plastic. So there is no metal or aluminum on these windows. The aluminum in these frames or the, the windows Aluminum is a, is a very conductive material, right? Copper, gold, aluminum. They're some of the most uh, conductive materials. That's if you throw some aluminum out on the ground in a hot day, you pick it up, it's gonna burn you, right? Radiators are made out of aluminum. So if you want you know, condensation or heat or cold conducting through something, you get aluminum, right? So I really love that he's chosen these windows so you don't get a lot of heat and cold transfer. Because when I was here a little bit ago, I had this closed and between this sunshade and then the window, you could feel there was heat over there, but this was actually blocking a lot of that. And then when you touch this plastic, you didn't feel anything. And a lot of windows, when you touch them and they're metal, you feel it, it's really hot. Over here, I wanna point out there is an outlet also with your cell phone connections. And then you also have the Truma, uh, which turns on your water heater and your furnace right on that side panel. One of the cool things about this table that you don't see in too many tables is sometimes they can be a pain to put down into a bed. This one is easier than most and the reason is because this thing moves around, right? So I can kind of move it away from the cushions and get it to the right spot and then I just push this lever. I can move it down and get it right there and it's locked in. And then all I need to do is grab the cushions, like that, and then you have a full-size bed. Obviously, you can stash those um, underneath the table. Those cushions can slide under there and get out of the way. And then you can throw down your sheet and sleep very comfortably in here. Well, I, I had two little girls sleeping in here when we were down, down in Moab, and they didn't complain. But little kids are usually easy going. So, Let's head on over to the bathroom to end this tour. I love the bathroom parts of these tours because I like it dirty and that's what the bathroom's all about. Right here we have a metal latch. This thing is going to shut and lock in place. You can open it up, the barn door. It's got a very nice modern feel to it. A lot of people are like, this looks like a Chip and Diane. That's a like, I think a couple from HGTV in case you didn't know. But if I did have one complaint about the entire trailer, it would be the shower is a little bit tight. I'm a big guy, 250 pounds. I'm six feet tall. And as you can see, I'm not even hitting the ceiling. The, your, your ceilings are probably close to seven feet in here. Go to our website and we'll have all of those details. But between the skylight, you could be massive and have no problem in the shower. And then um, I always do this soap drop test. Say I'm taking a shower. I actually have a bar of soap from our last trip. Say I drop that and I need to pick it up. Oh, it's gonna be difficult. It's tight in here. So I'm gonna have to bend down like that to pick it up, but it's possible. We are in a 16 foot trailer. This is a 16 foot box. Most trailers this size don't sleep for adults and don't have a dry bath and don't have inside outside kitchens and certainly don't have a 1080 amp hours of lithium and 600 watts on the roof. This trailer packs a lot of punch in this little trailer and for the little amount of space it has, they've utilized it very well. But you can kind of see, I'm gonna close this off so I can have some privacy. But you know, if I dropped it down, I'm not coming out of the shower curtain area. Works pretty good. Over here, we got a towel holder and then right behind over here, we have another towel holder. These are like little details that just drive me crazy. There's a lot of campers that don't have towel holders. And this is amazing. Look, this whole cabinet is built into the wall. And this, this like, it's like built into this like aluminum frame and structure. Most of them are just screwing to a wall and they get ripped out over time. Toilet paper, also some storage up here. You have your fantastic vent fan. And then of course your 
porcelain toilet. That's fancy. You can't go without your porcelain toilet. And right behind this porcelain toilet, you have a heat duct. And behind here, you have a paneling. And this is where some of your heat ducts are ran and also your water lines. So that will keep them warm for the four seasons. One of the things I do want to point out is over here, we have the pause symbol. That's actually the heat duct. So it comes and pushes heat out there. You also have that heat in the bathroom, you have a heat under the booth by your breaker panel. And then this pause symbol right under the door is your cold air intake, your exchange. So it pulls the air through there and then it's ducted inside, outside, everywhere in this trailer. AC unit is a Truma, all operated through the Garmin once again. It's a 13,500 BTU. That is one of the quietest air conditioning units on the market. When you put it on low, it's a lot of people were walking in during the show. I was running it all day at the show and they had no idea it was on. They were just like, whoa, that's unbelievable. Uh, on high, it, it puts out a bunch of noise, but you could easily put that on low, turn on the TV and not have to put it on full blast to watch a movie. So there you have it. I think I went over almost everything in this little trailer. There's a lot to unpack. If I had more time, I would talk about how it's all constructed and, but it, you can go and check out the factory tours to see all that. You can look at us trying to put a sledgehammer through the walls because we tried to do that. They gave me a massive sledgehammer and I feel ashamed that I wasn't able to put even a dent in the walls. It's unbelievable. At one point they had over a dozen people standing on this roof. It's very, very strong construction. The, the walls are actually, they come out from a company that builds panels for refrigeration semi-trucks. Now semi-trucks, those trailers are meant to put millions of miles on them, going down the highway and also refrigeration, which means it has to stay cool for the food they're transporting. So the walls, the material from the ground to the roof, everything in between this trailer, they are putting in some of the most premium components and features and materials. I've been so impressed. The more and more I hang out with this company, the more and more we've, you know, we visited the factory. I spent almost a week with uh, Maynard, who is the visionary, the founder behind the Paws brand, this new trailer, and it was really fun going to the show with him. And then afterwards we went down to Moab and just, you know, <laughs> had a good time. And I think, I think they're gonna continually improve this product to the point where it's, I mean, it already is really one of the best trailers on the market that you can buy. And they're just gonna keep on improving it. Maynard, one of the things he said when I was at the show, he said, man, you know, I used to come here and I would like get inspiration and copy everybody. But he says, it looks like we have to start coming up with our own ideas. And I suspect in the next couple of years, everybody's gonna be copying Paws. If they continue the trend, if they continue what they're doing, people are gonna be copying them because they'll be putting out some of the newest, most innovative stuff. There's no reason why we need to go to Australia to buy trailers anymore. This thing, like a brooder, 12 inches of travel. This has 12 inches of travel, 1200 watts of solar. 1080 amp hours of Battleborn Lithium with Victron, you know, some of the best components in the industry. If you have any questions about it, you wanna know any more information on it, you wanna buy one, put it in order. We ship anywhere in America. You can contact us at 801-860-0035 or email info at rvsofamerica.com or just go to our website and you know fill out the contact or there's a bubble that pops up. You can start talking to one of our sales coaches and they'll you know answer any questions you have. Anyway. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully you learned something. Make some comments. If you have any questions, let me know and have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. There's a deer behind me. We're in nature. This is, this is not staged, just so you know. This is our true campfire.